Hey guys, mystery boxes are fun, but sometimes the mystery part goes a little too far. Some kind of pop and some random t-shirt, but who knows what else? Heck, is the rest of the stuff even worth it? If you want a box that caters more to your liking, try Zanini Box. Pins, trading cards, that's it. No cheap add-ons or fillers, just pins and cards that are movie, video game, and comic book themed. With seven choices of subscriptions, you can customize your experience with a little less mystery and a lot more of what you're paying for. Visit ZaniniBox.com to customize your subscription now, and you can enter the code CBU20 to take an extra 20% off your entire order and let them know that Professor Bill sent you. Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Oh my god, wait, check my pockets and... Oh, it's it! I brought a Showmonger! Hey, episode 25, but we're not going to charge you an extra dollar for this issue. <laughs> <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. No reason to charge you extra for a quarterly issue. Now we're good. We'll wait until we get like the thousandth issue. <laughs> yeah. And then you're paying. So then you're paying out the nose. And we'll have like 40 variant covers for you. <laughs> so what's going on, Chill? You know, just sitting here thinking about comic books. Thinking oh. about allegations against Joss Whedon. What? Not sexuals. Oh, no, he's, he's no Warren Ellis, but he's got <laughs> allegations nonetheless. Yes, his unprofessional behavior according to uh ray fisher so who else there was yeah right so we've been talking about the stuff that uh this guy joss whedon has been doing and the allegations against him and people coming out and saying yes unprofessional behavior and things like that okay cool um here's the deal we've had a podcast recently and this is on me i'm gonna i'm gonna take the l for this one i forgot which podcast it was but it was uh some guy he's big in movies and i listened to the whole entire podcast and my god this guy talks a lot about absolutely nothing <laughs> but about the 46 minute mark he starts talking about uh you know what was it like working on buffy the set of buffy the vampire slayer and blah 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 and he was talking to james marsters James Marsters is the guy who played Spike on Buffy the Vampire Slater and later Angel, uh, those two TV series ran by Joss Whedon. Yeah. And we had a bit of um, reporting by several comic book uh, news agencies that said uh, more unprofessional behavior. You know, he, was, he did this and he did, he did all these different things. And like the, 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 the titles of the articles were bad, but it actually got even worse because the, the articles are always going to be clickbaity, right? But yep. it got worse when you actually read the article because it says like, oh, he did these things and these things and these. It says that he he at one point um, pushed Marson up against a wall and said, you're dead. You hear me? Dead, dead, dead. And then like hmm. walked away and the guy's like, oh, hey, oh, it's it's uh, it's your ball. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you, you, it's your baby. You do what you want to do, you know, with the show and things like that over a creative decision or something like that and, and all sorts of things. And like they really try to hammer hard or hammer home that unprofessional behavior and whatnot. So I figured I don't trust anybody. No, no, no. Seriously. I don't trust anybody. There was a Samuel L. Jackson movie that he did where he mentions he doesn't trust anybody. The other guy, the dad from American Pie says, even your mom is like, Hell no, especially not my mom. She might be trying to get me. You know, like, like that's me. I don't trust anybody. So I decided Neither does to let Steve me... Austin. Boom! Right, DTA baby. Don't trust Austin. Oh wait, that's what Taz said. <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't think I was going to catch that one. So I decided to go and actually look at look at the uh, on YouTube. I, I watched the whole freaking thing, so I, I didn't have to just hear about it. I saw it. I saw the reaction on everybody's face and whatnot. Nah, dude. There's so much purposeful misreporting in here that is disgusting. It's mm. abhorrent. So what happened is he's talking about how much he loved working with Joss Whedon and how it was a great opportunity, how he was said – because he used to do like Shakespeare and all sorts of other things, talk about how he was told to go out and be naked just for the sake of being naked uh, on stage. You know, This is on stage, not having nothing to do with Joss Whedon. He talked about how um, they would – try and get him to watch porn and all these things like that. So he'd be aroused to go out there and, and, you know, while he was naked on stage on, you know, and whatnot. And it's like, he felt very uncomfortable with things like this. I'm sorry. Shouldn't that be reported on as abusive behavior? No, 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 no. Standard procedure. Yeah. Standard procedure. No, no, no. That's just the way that it is there. We're here to bad mouth Joss Whedon, right? Look, did Joss Whedon do some bad things? I'm sure he has. Uh, it's been reported on this. Some people thought that what he did was bad for some things. 
But there's also guys like James Marston who says that he was hired on, they said, yeah, for five to ten episodes. So he went in there and he was going to try and convince them why you need him for ten, not five, because, oh, my God, steady work and a steady paycheck. That's amazing. So it winds up that he became a, a regular on there. Now, Joss Whedon's here's, – here's the backstory. Joss Whedon is very much on the idea of good versus evil and good wins. And good should always win effortlessly over evil. Nice and simple, short and sweet. If mm -hmm. you're evil, you deserve to be stomped. Like you're not even a problem. That's why so many vampires would show up and she would just boom, boom and take out these vampires. Sometimes she'd have a certain problem to deal with. But the vampires themselves were easy to deal with. And she, he expected the same thing to be about uh, Spike. And I forget what the other girl's name was that was in there also. But anyway, I used to watch the show for a while. So uh, so um, they say that at one point they decided they're going to keep him on. And they actually wound up finding him to be a very interesting vampire. So they kept him on for longer. Then they found out that people were actually wanted to see him get into relationships. So he started to get, oh, Drew, Drew Drusilla, I think was her name, uh, his, his vampire cohort. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so anyway, at one point they started saying like, oh my God, he's dreamy. I want to see him getting into relationships and blah, blah, blah. And, they, and just didn't really expect that to happen. He didn't want that to happen. And listen, maybe the guy it, suffers from mental illness Maybe he just – he has a hard time handling stress. I don't know, but he's a director. He deals with a lot of crap. He's in charge of everything there. So he had the very controlling mindset of, no, vampires shouldn't be in relationships. They don't deserve to be rewarded. They're evil. They're all evil. So when he started getting all this fan mail, there was a point where, you know, like he was getting visibly upset about it. He would, you know – director's meetings and things like that who bring up hey what if you know um marston said you know so and he's just like no no that's not happening don't get a big head kid okay i don't care what the fans are saying no don't get a big head but then later on clearly evidently the fact that they didn't kill spike it, they actually let you know what nine ten seasons whatever it was of buffy and then he went and he also went over to the angel series clearly he got to stick around for more than a couple of episodes Clearly, mm -hmm. he went with what the fans wanted. It just took him a while to do that because he didn't understand why fans would want to see vampires in loving relationships and actually being able to be good. He's like, but they're evil. So even though he didn't understand things, he still did what the fans wanted for the most part, okay. uh, drastically for the most part. But there was the one point where he where uh, he did, you know, he, he, he was talking to what's his name, Marston, in the hallway. And at one point he did, pushed him up against the wall and he said, listen to me, kid, you don't get a big head over this, okay? You're dead. Uh, you're, you know, you're, you're a vampire, so you're dead. You hear me? Dead, dead, dead. Like, emphasize it, driving the point home. He's like, hey, man, it's your show. It's your ball. Yeah, whatever you want to do. So you think, oh, unprofessional behavior, right? I guess. Yeah. Maybe this also just what people do in the industry. And if you don't like it, maybe you shouldn't be in the industry. No, it's because, still unprofessional. Sure. But Marston also said, I 100% understand where he was coming from and yeah. what he was doing. He was under a lot of stress. And to be honest, he's braver than I – like he's my hero. I am I am so amazed at how brave he is. He's braver than me. I would have been like, oh, I'm just going to cave and do whatever or no, I'm not going to do it or whatever. No, like he compromised. But he also kept with what he was, you know, going for, the theme that he was going for, his vision. Like Joss Whedon is one of the bravest guys I know. That's that's the stuff that Marston is saying. He's like, and I respect the hell out of him. And even the other guy was saying, like, isn't that a little weird? He's like, dude, like, have you seen some of the stuff that happens in theater? Like, you know, this stuff happened. This is just what it is. You're under a lot of stress and you're dealing with, you know, critics and you're dealing with direct. And nowadays you're dealing with Twitter. You know, saying so you get that that stuff directly, but from the fans, from the critics, from all these different people, and he's saying like that's just the way that it is. And maybe, like he was, the idea is that he's got a thicker skin. He's been in it longer. He handled it. He was okay with it, and he he greatly respects Joss Whedon. So Ray Fisher, who's brand new to the field, does he deserve to be treated? You know, the way that he wants to be treated to a degree, yes. But the industry isn't going to change for you. So maybe the fact, maybe with the lesson here is that. Ray Fisher simply isn't made for the industry. Let's be realistic. He's def definitely not being fair because while for the other guys, he would say, I believe this person and that person and, you know, Joss Whedon is a bad person. He didn't tweet out anything about, I believe James Marston. 
doesn't that seem a little hypocritical? Well, the absence of the tweet doesn't mean he's not in support of him. Uh, yeah, but at the same time, like this is this is like politicians talk. At the end of the day, if somebody says something about the professional or unprofessional nature or behavior of Joss Whedon, the person who you apparently hate, who apparently hurt you, like mm-hmm. apparently he's got some hurt, some pain from, you know, maybe traumatic, whatever, from what he was dealing with there. Listen. He likes Scott Snyder's style. He doesn't like Joss Whedon's style. Cool. But he's trying to cancel. Clearly, he's right. trying to cancel Joss Whedon. And now here's a guy who's saying something in favor of Joss Whedon. And he doesn't say, huh. He doesn't put out anything about that. But he's quick to say, I believe these people. So, yeah, I can see his motivation. Yeah. It still doesn't mean like the industry is right or justified it's a tough industry yes definitely but to put your hands on someone and you're dead you're dead that kind of stuff he's saying you're a vampire you're dead that's what he's saying you're you're dead you're a vampire but to aggressively right like Mm -hmm. give that message he's not in the right for doing it however i'm on the side like whatever man it's just like be, be grown have some tough skin and just accept it but the industry does have to doesn't have to change for freaking ray fisher Yes. Ray Fisher, but it's but the thing is, it's not right. Like the fact that it's happening isn't right. The fact that we do have these, you know, loose shades of gray where you are allowed to be a, it's it doesn't make it right. But it is it is what it is. So just like guys, you know what you're getting into. So don't be. I'm not, I mean, unless what if Ray Fisher is uh, an act change? What if everything becomes better because there are more Ray Fishers? Right. The way that that would work is you've then got people who are afraid to do this, that, and the other thing. Here's the thing. Like, there's so much, you know, to unpack with what you said because you're not wrong in anything you said. Me, if he, like, today, if he'd attacked me, granted, different than younger me, who's like, I just really need this job. Maybe, maybe James Marson could have said, first off, get your hands off of me. I agree with you. Yeah, yeah. 100%. But that doesn't give you the right to put your hands on me. Like, dude, you're not mad at me. You're mad at the the idea the audience doesn't see the vision that you see. You're not wrong for that. But, dude, you don't get to put your hands on me. Let that be the last time that happens. And put your foot down. Because people make mistakes. Well, sometimes that agitates him. Sometimes it, to do that might just, you know, kick the hornet's nest and something comes of it. It's better, it so, better sometimes just to sit there. I'll take it. And then maybe when he's in a cooler mood, you can bring that up and say, I didn't appreciate that time. Please don't do it again, or that yeah. will be the last time you do it if you want to get really, really strong on it. But in the moment to, you know, de-escalate, uh, that's a very hot topic. But maybe he'll just, like, be be accepting of the whole uh, abuse, which is not correct, but, you know. Possibly, but it's the also future. the only thing that he said ever happened. Does it mean nothing else ever happened? I don't no. know. Uh, maybe nothing else uh, did happen. I don't know. But whatever it is, he handled it the way that he chose to handle it. Right. Ray Fisher... Is turning around and making it a public thing and choosing which messages he amplifies. Before it's like, okay, ha ha ha, we're just guys, we're just ribbing each other. Like I said, I don't hold anything against Ray Fisher. For him not saying anything about this, now I'm holding, now I'm judging Ray Fisher. Mm. You know, like that's the thing. If it's just guys ribbing at each other, ah, <laughs> you know, it's messed up. You're mm-hmm. still there, you're still supporting, hey, we're, we're bros. You know what I'm saying? It, it is what it is. But when you start, but like, then sometimes you have that friend or whatever, and he can say, you know, I'm not your friend. You're right, bud. You're not. If, if that's the way, if that's the person you are. Being guys and just joking around with each other about things that, that happen bad to us, because let's face it, we're guys. You know, say we're guys. Crap happens to us all the time. You know what I'm saying? Nope. When, <laughs> what do you call it? If somebody starts some crap with a girl, hey, you don't hit a woman. If somebody hits a guy, you need to stand up for yourself, right? We deal with a lot of crap. Guys get get into fights all the time, get beaten up, whatever. If if we're doing guys versus girls, I'll never take the side of the guys because girls have it way worse. Um, I'm (laughs) not here to argue one way or another. Okay. Um, I'm just saying in general. Well, no, I'm just saying in general. Like I'm saying, this is how guys are. Jesus Christ! If 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 a guy's talking about you know, I'm thinking about committing suicide. Hey, buck up, be a man. You don't do that. You got a family to talk about. Nobody sits there and says. 
you should go to counseling. Oh my God. And like, we have a kumbaya session and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Guys get into fights. Oh, Hey, what? This is how guys are. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Whatever it is, what it is. But all the crap that guys go through, the answer is always be a man, tough it up, shut up about it. So this is me, you know, like, Oh, you want to talk about it? Cool. We're just guys. Let's talk about it. But when you start like going out and trying to make it a big thing, Mm, this happened and it's really bad. You're going mm-hmm. to make those jokes. But then when you start, you know, like I'm picking and choosing which message it's like, dude, that dude just, he also, you know, did your taxes for you. Or he also gave you some great advice or he also like, he was good to this person. You could say, Hey, it's good that this guy's okay with it, but I wasn't okay with the way that I was spoken to. So it's just the idea that he's picking sides. And now mm-hmm. as a guy, I'm saying, bruh, you're wrong in this one. I am judging you now. Before there was no judgment. Now I'm judging you. Yeah. Very transparent. Hey. I'm a John Boyega fan anyway, so I'm happy he got the role of Finn. Boom. Hey, I like <laughs> John Boyega too, and I hope that he's not canceled because he – it's usually the left that cancels people. Let's be realistic. Even if the right says <laughs> something, it's the left that actually the, – the, the left eats their own. You know what I'm saying? The left eats their own. It's like, we, so, we must punish all of our own to show that blah, 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 blah. So, so saying that Black Lives Matter is considered left and yes, it's not, consi- it's not considered right? No, it's not. Anyone on the right wing, please, uh, on this YouTube ch- video, you pl- please let me know if that's correct. Is Black Lives Matter considered right wing? No, it's considered left wing. That's crazy. <laughs> Matrix it's a liberal sequels. topic, not a not a conservative topic. Well, it it should be conservative a, topic is support the police. The police are making you know decisions based on you know the 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 moment. We don't go on a on a whole. We go on the moment. So I believe the New York Police Department gets six billion dollars in funding, and they don't have to disclose where the, all that money goes to. I heard DJ Envy mm-hmm. say that. That's remarkable. Yeah. yeah on a pot. You take funding from whatever. Jeez, who was it? Oh no, hmm. who was it? Some rich, I, okay, I want to say it was, okay, I'm not going to say who it was because I'm not sure of who it was, but mm-hmm. there was some rich guy who was very famous who, when he moved into a new town, he right away started giving a bunch of like blank checks to uh, police departments. Hey, maybe you need new uniforms. Maybe you need body armor, whatever you need, blah, 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 blah. Hey, you know, this is me giving it to you. What's up? And right away, what, what message does that send? That means that I like We're you. We're tight, you and me, right? We're exactly. tight. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to buy, you know, back in the day when bribes were a little bit, you know, more open. Um, hey, uh, you stopped me for a ticket. Hey, do you have any tickets to the policeman's ball? I, I could use a couple of tickets to the policeman's ball because that goes directly to the cop. As opposed to, you get it? Okay. As opposed to, um, oh, I got to pay a fine for, you know, for speeding. And I can get out of points. Right. So, yeah, hey, you got any tickets to the policeman's ball? I'd like, you know, for my wife and I to go. What are they like? Twenty bucks each, or you know, back in the day, whatever the equivalent today of twenty bucks each. You know, here's a Jeff change for fifty. <laughs> you know, saying yeah, get out of a ticket. You know, funny story. You know that the million dollar man used to get hundred dollar bills, and he'd walk around, purchase something for like three bucks with a hundred dollar bill. Yeah, they yeah. have to keep the character that this wrestler, the million dollar man, was actually a millionaire in the eighties. Yeah, the the podcast that Bruce Pritchard did, because uh, he was the one who was assigned to hang out with him. Uh, the, the podcast that they, that he and Conrad Thompson did about the million dollar man is definitely worth listening to because holy crap, it was amazing. Hmm. Yeah. Tell me about the matrix sequels. Okay. So where's that at here? The matrix sequels are a funny thing. It's another one of those (sighs) topics. Yes, it really is. So I liked, listen, Full disclosure, I liked the Matrix sequels. I loved the Matrix movie. I liked the Matrix sequels Mm because I was there when they first came out. The hype behind it, you had no idea what it was. And all of a sudden you see it in the movie theaters like, I wasn't expecting this amazingness. And it was brand new technology and all that stuff. But the other movies, the the sequels seemed a little tired. Well, apparently they were meant to be tired. So the Matrix series were meant to be tired because the Wachowskis, uh, uh, the the siblings, they, they read a Stanley Kubrick book about how... Um, how he did all of his films, and, and he just died at about that time. This is right after Eyes Wide Shut came out. He died at about that time. So they read one of his books, and apparently one of his things uh, that he read was that actors don't do natural performances until they are worn out. 
So, and this is coming from one of the um, the um, the backstage crew that um, uh, there were talks of doing ninety takes at a time and two hundred and seventy six days of filming and all sorts of crazy stuff like that. Like there, th- this was the conversation that was being had about why the movie seemed like you know it was so tired because all the actors were actually exhausted and yeah i don't know why anybody would ever sign up to do the the fourth movie after a a hectic schedule like that because mind you you don't get paid more that's a salary that you get Mm -hmm. you know so it's like hey i'm gonna give you 10 million to do this movie it's like cool but it's gonna take you know okay now that you signed the contract well, it looks like it's going to be three years to, you know, doing this movie in total. You're stuck on it. If if, if it winds up going into re- – because reshoots are part of the contract and everything. So that's messed yeah. up. Tell that to the Star Wars. Uh, I, I heard episode <laughs> nine was being reshot even a month up up to a month of its release. Dude, the um, – yeah, it's, that's true. The uh, – you know the end credit scene for – here we go with Joss Whedon again. For the original yeah. Avengers movie, the that shawarma. end credit scene – yeah, the shawarma scene, that happened – after the premiere, uh, the premiere, so they premiered that movie, and they're like, "Guys, you're all here. Come back to this shawarma place and let's let's do this film." It's like, "I got a beard." It's like, "Just put your hand over here like this, you know, <laughs> Captain America." And, and like, and they get in the costume and they distress them to make them look dirty, and and they're like, yep. "Let's just shoot this really quick." And that's where that came. <laughs> like the day <laughs> after the day of the premiere is when they did that. So then a week, two weeks later, when it actually comes to regular theaters, hey, extra scene, guys. Wow. The movie theater, <laughs> the movie business is freaking crazy. Yeah. It's it's Kevin Feige, though. He's like, you know what? All that movie it's stuff. It's also Joss Whedon. Things need to be fully produced and it's got to be up to standard. Nah, just come here. You guys are actors. You act. You're experts. Like, the, the, them six guys are Jeremy Renner and, and Scarlett Johansson alone. Uh, freaking RDJ. These guys are like masters at their craft. Everyone else is all right. But <laughs> then you got these other guys who are pretty much brand new. Oh, they've got a movie or two. And it's like, let's start. <laughs> and, they can eat. And, yeah, it's like they started in a starring row. Imagine that. You know, mm. saying like Chris mm. Hemsworth. I don't know. He was in like like for 20 seconds of the the J.J. Abrams Star Wars movie or Star Trek movie. Yeah. You know, the first one. It's like, what else was he in? I don't think he was really in oh. anything. And Chris Pine was in that too, wasn't he? Chris Pine was, yeah, the main actor in there. Yeah. So uh, uh, Chris Hemsworth played Chris Pine's father in there. James Tiberius Kirk's father. Uh, That's what James T. Kirk stands for. It's good to see the crisscross pollination because there's like four sexy Chris's that that exist. And three of them are in Marvel, but one of them is in in Wonder Woman 84 even. Like that's going to be remarkable. We'll see. Chris Hemsworth, Chris Evans, Chris Pratt, and Chris... Fine. Yes. Bang. Okay. There you go. The sexy Chris is okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that works. Now, Lucifer season five returns to Netflix with a twist. Yeah, it's a really weird kind of twist. Uh, basically, the uh, we're going to talk anything that we want about Shellmonger right now. So, anyways, guys, let me tell you about Shellmonger because he's getting the door right now. Uh, this freaking guy. <laughs> I'm gonna let all that slide. Okay. Real talk though. Um, <laughs> Like, this is just too funny. Anyway, um, oh my God, what did he even say in the first place? <laughs> like, I'm just laughing too much at this. He got up and he left. He had to get the door. So, Lucifer season five is going to return. Um, it's going to be the same cast, whatever. But also, apparently, there was a part where they showed that Lucifer's brother is Michael. Oh my God. So, it's funny because he Michael's the guy who, in the Bible, um, uh, uh, Lucifer had the flaming sword, but when he fell from heaven, he went off and he was now the, the Lord of hell and whatnot. But the flaming sword, excuse me, actually stayed with, um, with Michael. So Michael now had the flaming sword and Michael is apparently going to be his brother in this. So, and apparently it's a twin brother. So we've got Lucifer playing the part of, um, his brother Michael in this, so it's so maybe they'll change the name to Michael at some point. I don't know, but anyway, so yeah, that's sounds that's how interesting. That works. <laughs> Johnny I did d- make fun of you a lot while you were gone. Oh, okay. Well, I thought yeah, <laughs> the audience is in on the joke. <laughs> oh yes, they are. And now you are too. <laughs> yeah. Um. Did you finish talking about Lucifer? I did. Yes. <laughs> 
You want to continue talking about Amber Heard? Apparently, she's got a new nickname from Johnny Depp. Yeah, so there was a time when he was late to her birthday party for whatever reason, and then he left early too. Uh, I don't know the details behind it. I'm not going to listen to all the or read all those transcripts from the court case. Actually, the transcripts wouldn't be available yet. Mm -hmm. But the uh, but I'm just not listening to all that stuff. But anyway, so he so I don't know why he left. He came late and left early. I don't know. But he um, apparently he got punished for that by either Amber or her friend. He said it was actually more likely that her friend did it because that's more in her her wheelhouse to do, you know, things like that. But they one of those two actually decided to take a dump on their marital bed. So his new nickname for her and it was trending on Twitter, Amber Turd. <laughs> <laughs> that's very good. That's really good. I like it. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, that's 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 some guy stuff right there. It's like you you can go ahead and you can slash my tires, cut the cut the ass out my boxer drawers, you know what I'm saying? Uh key my car, whatever you're gonna do, but I'm just gonna make a nickname for you. <laughs> oh it's gonna man. stick too. It's gonna oh well, ew, it's gonna stick. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> man. It's uh that's Amber's ass. But, you know, Hugh Jackman's ass. That was a great segue. That was uh, that a was fantastic okay segue. segue. Was a segue, was... but it wasn't very natural, but I'm digging on it. I, I, I like seeing you pat yourself on the back, though, man. You deserve it. You really do. Like, yeah. you're the segue guy. You know what I'm saying? So, so definitely. Captain America's bum is America's ass. Is Hugh Jack because he was Wolverine, right? Is mm-hmm. that Canada's ass Canadian. or is that Australian ass? Well, yeah, because Hugh Jackman is Australian, so mm. I don't know. I don't know. Mm. We just call what is it like um like formerly British? We just say formerly British ass. Like the Commonwealth ass. Oh, yeah, you can call it the Commonwealth. There you go, the Commonwealth of England ass. We could do that. There All it right, is. We could do that. Well, oh, the okay. reason I'm bringing it up is because Disney Plus <laughs> showed a scene with a bare bottom. Days of Future Past. The movie they've been releasing the um. Uh, what do you call it? the the movies as uh, the 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 X Men movies the Fox Studios movies like once a month or so? Did I say booty? Oh, because no, we're on but we're, we're talking on it. about okay. it. They're the bootios. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they have uh, they released that and bang. So uh, so so that one just got released and they had him say the f word and they showed his butt on Disney Plus. Why is this important? Why is this news? It's kind of news because we're worried about Deadpool, right? Mm-hmm. All of us fans were worried about him actually being Deadpool and actually being able to be Deadpool and Ryan Reynolds saying the things that he says and whatnot. You know, the whole reason why he did that re-release of Deadpool, what was it, Deadpool 1 or Deadpool 2? It was 2, the Christmas release of uh, Once Christmas Upon a Deadpool. Deadpool. Yeah, Once Upon a Deadpool with Fred Savage from Wonder Years. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's Ben Savage's uh, father. Or, or, or excuse me, older brother from Wonder, uh, not from Wonder, from um, Boy Meets World, my favorite show. Uh, anyway, yeah, uh, they had him in it, and there's like a very tamed version. He would quiet him whenever he was going to say an f word or some kind of a curse. He'd be like, "No potty mouth, stop!" And it's so weird yeah. to me to the fact that they would put a bleep right when a guy is going to say the f word. Kids can figure it out; they know what you're saying. I don't feel like the bleep really changes anything at all. Plus, the violence doesn't actually change too much of the um, the thing anyway. It's because a rated in America, R movie to its core, yeah. Yeah. In America, we're okay with violence. We're not okay with sex, which shows you we're still a very conservative nation. Think Is about that. What that. that shows you? Okay. Yes, 100%. You know, pro guns, pro death penalty, pro blah, 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 but no nudity. That's not cool. Bang, 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 whatever. Very biblical. You know what I'm saying? This is not an insult on the left or the right or whatever. It's not. It's it's the way that it is, and I'm okay with it. You know, it is what it is. We're okay with violence. We don't want to see nudity, though. So, um, think about, or we want to see it, but they're not going to show it to us anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what you uh, that's what you get. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so the whole reason why that was done is because Ryan Reynolds is trying to show. Look, I can make Deadpool for the the you know for Disney Plus. I'm saying for make Disney happy. MCU, hook me up. MCU me. <laughs> Um, but Disney is showing, yeah, hey, guess what? We're actually kind of okay with uh, some of the stuff you do too. So they're trying to test the waters here and there and trying to see if maybe, just maybe, they can actually show some Deadpool stuff on there. And if they can, then hey, they're good because Ryan Reynolds wants to play Deadpool in the MCU. 
Yes. And now we you want to see him. Well, everyone wants to see him, but I also don't want to pretend like he's he's this PG hero. Yeah. I, I don't know. You can do it. They you can do rated PG-13. R. They're okay with PG-13. Right, where uh, where Star-Lord can look over at Thanos and give him the finger and then do a, do a fall back into Doctor Strange's portal. Or the yeah, or the thing before in Guardians, Guardians. of the Galaxy one where he he winded up like a fishing you know rod you know his exactly. middle finger. It's like yeah. bro, well, who are we kidding anymore? This PG rated R stuff is it's not something that I would approve for my what age? At what age would I be okay with a Deadpool movie, even if everything's bleeped? Would you show your my seven year old? He yeah. hasn't seen it yet. I don't know if I want him to see it. Exactly. I, even I'd if it's bleeped. It again. I'd have to see it again just to just to be sure. But the idea is that I have the choice to say, yeah. no, thank you. You're not going to watch this now. Yes. When, I, he's, I, when he's 10, though, I'm not going to have any problem with him watching pretty much anything. Watch whatever you want, dude. A you 10? know, like that's on you. Yeah, 10. I was 12 years old when I saw the original Robocop. Imagine a 10 year old watching look, it. Did you ever see that? No, but Robocop is nothing like Deadpool. Robocop is worse. How's Ro- how's Robocop worse? Dude, I'm talking the original RoboCop movie that came out back in the uh, the the mid to late '80s. Like in the very, in practically the beginning of the movie, you see Ed Two Hundred Nine, bu- 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 fire endless rounds of machine gun into a guy. You hear his body as the meat is chopped up and riddled with bullets, and he falls out of a window. Then you see at one point uh, later on, Murphy is laying on the ground. He, he's he's helpless, and um, the one guy is like you know like this with the shotgun, and actually blows off. Murphy's hand you see his hand explode after the gun you know fire you see it and then he gets up and they start riddling him with bullets and he's screaming at one point ah as he's getting shot and it's like I was 12 years old and like oh my god I shouldn't be watching this stuff but I was enamored and I wanted to see it again immediately after it was over I I guess that makes me an American because I say it's not like it's nudity or nothing crazy the thing with those things are these are lessons that you learn when you when your parents tell you don't put your fingers on the stove because you can get burnt or because, you know, look both ways before you cross the street because the car can hit you or the dangers of, you know, this can cut your hand off. At least now you're seeing that, whoa, this is how a body could be. And I'm not even joking when I say this, but I can, mm-hmm. I'm like, there's a visual example right in front of me of the dangers that can happen, you know, what the human body can take and can't take. I can learn from that. And, um, it's, it's you take guns more seriously after seeing stuff like that. I don't there see it was as bad. a quick uh, breast scene. Some random female cop in the Detroit police department. She was changing, and like you saw a quick shot of her breast as the camera was panning. Like it was really brief. It was whatever. It's forget That's most crazy, people eh? probably forgot about it. Just just because the movie was rated R, they're like, oh, we we can do it. So let's just put. Might it as in well there. show a quick flash of breasts. But mm-hmm. the thing is, like all this stuff comes back to our upbringing as a nation from England. Think about it. Public executions. But meanwhile, you know, you had to get married, you know, so have a license in order to procreate. You get it? Yeah. Like, so, so sex, very conservative. Um, violence, yeah, do whatever you want. Very liberal. Violence, boom, 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 boom. It's not a liberal term, but be liberal with your, I'm using it as a, as a noun as opposed to a, a descriptive specifically. Uh, so a, a, a verb as opposed to a noun in that case. Anyway. Gotcha. <laughs> Scream Factory, Friday the 13th, DVD. Dude, we are getting the ultimate. Uh, this is just me nerding out completely. We're talking <laughs> about horror movies and sex in horror movies because mm-hmm. it ain't a horror mo- it, ain't, it ain't a Friday the 13th movie unless somebody gets killed while they're doing it. I'm saying. So we are going to have a completely unrated box set coming out with all the. There's going to be like. 15 or 37 DVDs, whatever, like extras and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, yeah, behind the scenes footage. Woo! Like, oh, I'm so excited for this, dude. You have no idea. And this is going to be coming out. Um, but, 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 what is this? Uh, 16 well, it be Friday the 13th. No, it's going to be on a Tuesday. The thir- oh. uh, uh, the, the, uh, so it's a Tuesday, the 13th in October. So it's coming out in October, but there is no Friday 13th at, uh, in October. So they're doing what they can. But 16 disc set, um, all movies. Uh, it's going to be 4K scans specifically for the first uh, four movies. But they're also the third movie was actually Friday the 13th Part 3 in 3D. So it's going to be in 3D again, so you can actually get the stupid little – they'll probably come with the glasses, the little red and blue that you put them on. And it's like you can actually see them squeezing that one kid – Jason squeezing the one kid's head and his eyeball pops out right at the camera. And it's like, yes! 
I was a kid when I watched that also. I think I was seven when I watched that. <laughs> like, oh the, my God. The most I memorable you. eyeballs popping out was Glenn from Walking Dead. You guys remember that? With uh, Lucille, is that the name of Negan's bat? The bat, yeah. yep, the baseball Ooh. bat. Oh, yeah, Negan Lives just came out recently. I've got it over here someplace. The Negan Lives comic book uh, came out last week or the week before last. Where the frick is my copy, brah? Anyway, it's over here someplace. So anyway, it exists. I saw them um, say something about Walking Dead's new comics being colored or old comics being recolored. Oh, uh, are they really going to do that? Whatever. If there's a market for it, fine. And you're going to give somebody else a job. So by all means, if you can make some more money from it, then do it. You know, why not do it? Plus, it'll be easier to tell because I fell off the book because sometimes I couldn't tell who was who in mm. the book. You know, I'd be like, Rick actually lost his hand in the book. So that was like really easy to tell who Rick was as long as you could see the hand. And it's or, not like it's not like Eddie Brock losing a hand where we know yeah. it'll be back after he dies. We know it'll be back somehow. It's comics. He's so, got to die first for, to get his hand back. That's true. So uh, after the after the Venom event or the big um, uh, null King event. King in black. Uh-huh. King in black. I'm sure he'll get it back. So there's going to be a lot of audio commentary. There's going to be multiple audio commentary on some of the tracts, which mm-hmm. is going to be amazing for the Friday the 13th thing. Here's the one problem. Oh, there's going to be a lithograph if you order it, you know, online, whatever. Uh, here's the problem. A I haven't seen anything, anything from Tom Savini. Meaning? Do you know who Tom Savini is? No. You know him from the modern days because he's the guy who actually designed the mask and the belt and the lantern of the green lantern of the mandalorian <sighs> wwe oh of uh, bray wyatt yes thank you <laughs> so he's the one who actually designed all those things like uh-huh. he designed the mask and everything and just like boom like he is known as the makeup artist special effects guy like that's him for horror you know like nobody doubts tom savini you ever seen from dust till dawn no, I don't watch the movies like that. Oh, dude, we got to hang and we got to watch these <laughs> movies. You're going to freak. Anyway, uh, Tom Savini was actually involved with the early Friday the 13th movies. I think he was involved in the first one. Anyway, um, I haven't seen anything like that should be the big deal. That's what we mostly know him from originally. And I figure there's at least going to be a audio commentary by, you know, with him on it. But unfortunately, I haven't seen anything. And that breaks my heart. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Something else coming out in October, allegedly, you know, is, uh, you know, if America, if you guys can get your COVID stuff in, in order, is Wonder Woman 84. Oh, that's right. Wonder Woman 84. It's going to be a bunch you... coming out. Um, well, first off, there's going to be the Wonder Woman complete DVD set. I actually meant to mention that also. That's also coming out. Uh, the one featuring the three seasons of Linda Carter as Wonder Woman that I watched when I was a freaking kid. And I was like, Wonder Woman is the greatest superhero ever. Her in the flash. But anyway, <laughs> I always changed who my favorite heroes were. Yeah, me too. But um, as far as Wonder Woman specifically, the uh, the 1984 movie, there's a little tiny, tiny bit of a spoiler here. Not really. Just... We know what this, what the, uh, the the item is. How Steve Trevor actually comes back to life. Yeah, so if you don't want moves. to hear that, mm-hmm. go forward like you know a couple of moments or mute it for like. Well, tell them exactly how much. Seconds. Tell them exactly 30, how fast forward. Thirty seconds. Okay, go. Okay, so it's going to be the Dreamstone. So the Dreamstone is actually an item that Neil Gaiman created when he was making his original Sandman comic books in the first issue. Dream was captured by an Aleister Crowley wannabe, and uh, the, he had to give over the Dreamstone, and he refused to. But that is the item. So that's going to allow everybody to grant uh, – the, the Dreamstone will grant everybody in this movie one lousy wish. By it granting one wish, you you know, then somebody – you know, it's useless to you. So – the wish that Wonder Woman's going to accidentally inadvertently make is I wish Steve Trevor were here again. So, but it's going to come with a cost. So it's like, up, oh, maybe he's going to be taken away at the end of the, and break her heart again. And I'm seeing all this stuff happen. But anyway, that's how, when the bad guy gets it, he's trying to trick other people into, you know, using wishes that will actually benefit him because he's already used his wish to become a famous televangelist or whatever. And now 
uh, Kristen Wiig is going to be tricked into obviously becoming the cheetah. And that's going to be the negative recourse is that she turns into that very horrible makeup looking version of the cheetah. Anyway, that's pretty much the gist. The question is, will this now be able to be used for a future Sandman movie? Because we know the audiobook is coming. So Mm -hmm. let's see. Let's see. Okay. And that spoiler was uh, about a minute and 20 seconds. Oops. (laughs) So I'll make sure I put that in the uh, video version that it's going to be, you know, go a minute and a half. And a half yeah, in advance. yeah. Anyway. It doesn't sound like a good idea. I won't say what it was, but yeah, that does not attract me. I hear you. Let's go to Tom King oh, and Rorschach. So Tom King, <laughs> who is, aside from Bendis, he is... One of the most divisive, like you either love him or you're just like, dude, no, there are people who hate me. I'm just kind of like, I feel like he doesn't have anything new to offer. Everything that he does is just real. That's just my opinion. I don't, I feel like every single thing that he does is going to be about horrible life sucks, you know, suicidal. What do I do now? And then a, a very bad ending. That's not really going to pay off for anybody at all. I've read flash forward. I've read, uh, Mr. Miracle, I still like, but the ending is still a little bit what? But Flash Forward, I don't think there's anybody out there who actually liked Flash Forward. Please mention if you liked Flash Forward, because I don't think anybody did. Anyway, anyway, um, he's going to be doing a Rorschach miniseries. Well, it's not even a miniseries. They're calling it a miniseries, but it's a maxi series. It's 12 issues long. So okay. much like he's going to be doing a Batwoman, Catwoman maxi series, and he did the maxi series for. Um, uh, I just said it, uh, Miracle Man, Mr. Miracle, and he's in the process of doing the mini, the twelve issue maxi series for Adam Strange. Now he's gonna be doing a twelve issue maxi series. For, like it's funny, he only thinks in twelves. <laughs> Vision huh. was twelve, but the that's Vision just the comic book industry in general. They go till twelve. At least DC is announcing six it. or twelve. Yes, they yeah, either go six, six or, 12. or twelve, or it's good and they just go as long as they can. Which Al Ewing, do you remember the rumor that Immortal Hulk was only supposed to go up to 25, but because it was doing good, they asked him to do more? Remember that? Hmm. Well, I think rumor. I heard rumors, yeah. yeah. And you know me with rumors. I just. But you know, like Nick Spencer is always going to do a long, amazing Spider Man. It's been two years. Jason Aaron was always going to be on Avengers, our everyone's favorite, right, Cryptid? Everyone's favorite writer. <laughs> we know that, um, who else? Tanahisi Coates. He was going to do Black Panther for eons. It's coming to an end now. Yeah, good. <laughs> good. Still no um, word on, you know, the new I, Black Panther. Issue 24 has not been advertised yet. It's mm, not coming in September or October. Mind you, I liked his original volume of Black Panther. I just don't yeah. like his new one where he went up in space. I just, I, I can't even get back on it. I'm just so bothered by it. I'm with you too. I'll just wait. Yeah, Leonard you know, Kirk you know, was drawing it. The legendary Leonard Kirk. And Daniel Acuna was on it for a little bit also, wasn't he? Oh, mm-hmm. you, yeah, I know what you mean. You mean the other one. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Um, When they do oh. do Black Panther. Mm-hmm. When they do do Amber Turd. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> See what I did there? You, sm- ah, you smell what I did there? Go ahead. <laughs> I feel smell. La, la, la. Um, <laughs> the rock. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. I don't care about a white or a black a black guy, excuse me, doing Black Panther because he's black. Mm. I like the way Hickman can do a Black Panther in his in his new Avengers and treat it with respect. Yeah, but that's also not long term and focused solely on him. Uh, I'm I'm curious how he would do in an actual series and if he would actually do a good job. The only white guy I know that's ever done a good job with him long term, because I'm not including Stan Lee. He just did a little bit of things on the like two issues on the Fantastic Four. I don't know whatever ever else he did, but Mark Tex no, um, Don McGregor is the only yeah. white guy I know that actually did a great job. He's the one who introduced Killmonger and so many other characters. Um, uh, the original story, like he introduced a lot. After that, you got um, um, I just said his name, uh, Stanley, Mark, Mark Textiera, uh-huh. uh, Christopher Priest. Uh, Ta-Nehisi Coates, some Nettie Okorafor, which some of her stuff was good. I like Roxanne Gay, what she did with the um, World of World Wakanda. Of Wakanda. It was World of Wakanda, yeah. I like what she did there. You know, so I, I like a lot of that stuff because I feel like they are coming from, like they've thought about it a lot. These were heroes of theirs for a while. I maybe I could do a good, you know, um, 
uh, Black Panther because that is a character who I have thought a lot about. You know, I, I don't know that I know the culture too much. I'd probably be talking to my wife about that a it's lot. It's a made-up culture. You, you it's grew. a made-up culture that's still based on a reality. Uh. Like, dude, Hausa is an actual language. You know what I'm saying? And that's the language that the Dora Milaje spoke. And that and was actually... And it's pronounced Osa. Oh. You got to do the click with your tongue. Better than me. See, I made that mistake. No, I'm not even going to try it because I'll just ruin it. I'll wreck it. Uh, but that's Christopher Priest who did that. You know uh. what I'm saying? So... That's what I'm saying. Like, Don McGregor, cool. Uh, Stan Lee, maybe. Anybody else? Eh. Let me – l- l- r- write 10 issues first. R- write, write, it, write an arc first and let me see mm. what you're going to do with it. You know what I'm saying? But uh, be- besides that, I don't I know, need, man. I, I need I someone know. high profile just to get the sales up. We've done the authentic. We've done the – of all these guys we just mentioned – I guess Christopher Priest made a name for himself off of Black Panther, but they never like put a celebrity, a celebrity, a, a, a Warren Ellis type writer on the book, like someone who's got some well, clout. Has to coach this technically because he had a he, he has a huge audience Outside. on TV, he testified before Congress, all that. Yes, so he's bringing in a huge uh, audience. Well, it seems to not be working because sales for the Black Panther were never at the sales of like. Even freaking Miles Morales or someone like that, because it got Bendis on it. You put Bendis on that book, boom. Yeah. Remember a few weeks ago when I was talking about Louis Farrakhan? Yeah, just really quick. Do you want to uh. put like Al Sharpton on the book? No, I don't want to put Al Sharpton <laughs> on the book. So like a high high profile celebrity. <laughs> high Go profile on. You writer. Want, you want to- yeah, you want to put on um, Louis Farrakhan. On the or Jer- Jason Aaron, yeah, that's, that's exactly what I said. <laughs> Freaking, Jason Aaron, but, no. I'm, I'm terrified of anything that Jason Aaron does at this point. I I really hate his uh, Avengers that's going on right now. I cannot stand it. He had three issues. He had three uh, issues of Black Panther back in 2008, oh. I think. And he did pretty well. Really? That's yeah. three issues, but we're talking about an arc. Let him do another three issues then. Yeah, like I said, test the waters. Give me an arc. <laughs> I was saying Louis Farrakhan and uh, and that whole nation of stuff, and I was telling nation you how I was like stuff, it yeah. should be called Nation of something else. And then like last oh, week, yeah. I was telling you about Killmonger, telling you about how he looks at it from the perspective of a uh, a Westerner, but if you look mm-hmm. at it as a Wakandan, if you pretend it's real, they were disassociating themselves from black people from the beginning. So. They this whole black love black look out for each other all that stuff that only they were applies. just associating themselves from other nations other nations who happened yeah. to be black but it was because they were different and even though they didn't see the skin color and then yeah it wasn't about skin color it was no. just about but they, but the fact that they were black means that Killmonger's mindset did not apply to them they did not feel like they had any responsibility to take care of the rest of the world. Like Reggie Hudlin, I think did, in my opinion, I think did the most with it. Maybe somebody's going to have a different opinion, whatever. But you know, with Reggie Hudlin, it was like, oh, we've got there are bordering neighbors, and they don't treat them any better or worse than they treated the European nations. All the nations they treated them as outsiders and said right. no. So yeah, it, it really wasn't based on anything racial. Yeah, so I'm just bringing it up to to, to bring up Nick Cannon, who said some shit. Who said some and- racial stuff. <laughs> and I'm saying, like, that's, that's kind of what I was talking about. When you're talking about, you know, the melanin and the sun makes us a little bit more. It's like, bro, no. You can look out for each other because of the hard times. That's hard times, daddy. That's hard times. <laughs> oh, like, nice. We got it in. Uh, a computer took your watch, daddy. <laughs> Just a working man. <laughs> uh, well, when it's about that, sure, yeah. But then when it's not about that and when you actually think of some, like, supremacy shit you're validating terry cruz i thought terry cruz was an idiot for wilding out about wilding out that was very funny uh nice that was a segue <laughs> <laughs> but i thought i thought what's guy talking about why how's that relevant to the conversation you know black lives matter doesn't mean black lives better and then all of a sudden you got nick cannon you know yeah that, that didn't work for me i just i just wanted to bring that up and be like see that's it's, it's kind of topical because it's what we were talking about for the last two weeks and then here comes him okay so now here's my take on it. Sure. Um, Nick Cannon is a jackass. <laughs> He's a very smart jackass who was able to buy Nickelodeon or a huge portion of it. Made Wild and Out. That's where that reference was coming from. That TV show that was on MTV. Uh, he did what um, American Idol or whatever that show was that he America's was. America's Got Talent. America's Got Talent. Where literally all he did just he just kept his face on camera, just turning around, looking at the camera, going ah. 
gotten mm-hmm. stupid stuff like that. Like he's an idiot. He's an absolute idiot who happens to be really smart. You know what I'm saying? But he <laughs> he 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 made a lot of he made a lot of money. He's going to keep on making money, and he has been looking in a lot of uh, African culture, uh, but written by nationalists, um, yeah. supremacists. Yes, uh, and, but at the end, so so that's that. He was also involved in the Eminem thing where he tried to call Eminem a racist because when he was 16 years old, after he broke up, had a really bad breakup with a black girl, mm-hmm. he then wrote a stupid song that he he apologized for and said it was a stupid 16-year-old song about how black girls are stupid and black girls are dumb. Uh, this is after which Benzino. Is wrong, but it, which is to, wrong. It's of good to it's hear wrong. that he apologized for it and he yeah, hasn't acted wrong. on that since. No, yeah, and again, he apologized. He was hoping that nobody would ever see that stupid thing again. Somebody did, and it's like, oops, I'm sorry. You know, it was dumb. And mm-hmm. He, he, he commented on it, whatever. Benzino tried to do the exact same thing, and it's like, people were just like, dude, it's M. Yeah, that was a stupid song. What's the context of it? Blah, 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 blah. And and for the most part, the the, the you know, the, the celebrities amongst the black community in the rap, um, rap, uh, rap culture, they've come out and they're just like, yeah, it was a stupid thing for him to say. Who hasn't said something stupid when you're angry? So... All that being said, I'm going to apply the exact same logic to Nick Cannon. It was a stupid thing to say. At the same time, he said it from a place of anger. He said it from a place of hurt. Did something immediately happen to him? Is he just responding to, you know, like Black Lives Matter is a response to, you know, the the, the, the tactics of the police Police and whatnot. Yes. Mm -hmm. So therefore, um, and, and that I believe was a drastically most like somebody's going to argue no it's it's not a good group it's a great group you know yes there's been a couple little problems here and there but it's not a group problem that's an individual's problem so <laughs> you keep that same energy for tucker carlson's head writer though uh no that's an entirely different story he's a racist piece of crap and there's mm-hmm. nothing that's good that's come out of that guy that's a huge difference um what do you call it? anyway so just my my whole point is i like black lives matter movement the movement as a, as a whole um what do you call it but uh but but like nick cannon i think that he was just doing it as a response to something he, he just had some stuff on his mind he responded to it in the moment here's the thing when you're a public personality like i'm aware of this chill i hope that you're aware of this there are going to be times when you're going to not feel like you're not going to feel good and you're not going to recognize you're not feeling good you know what I'm saying? If you're always on camera, you're always being filmed. Sometimes you're going live, you're doing this, that, or the other thing. Yeah. Sometimes you're going to get caught out there not being in a good mood. You're going to say something that you wish that you didn't say, that you don't really believe, but you just say it in a moment of anger. And maybe just like, you know what, just I'll come back to it later and I'll just, I'll say my correct thoughts. But too late, somebody caught feelings over it. Somebody's pissed off about it. Somebody's, ah! And they're going to be canceled. MTV is going to cancel you and whatever. And it's like, no, dude, they got him for over the Jewish comments. That's they, crazy. Yeah, they got him over Jewish comments also, which that, and that's a thing. It wasn't what, as bad as the white comments, in my right. opinion. Actually, was he even wrong? Aren't, <laughs> aren't black people an older race of people than the Jews? Like, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Is it wrong to say that? Like there, there are black Jews uh, all over northern Africa that are not even accepted as proper Jews in Israel. But, but it was it, the conspiracy theories, as they said in uh, Viacom's statement. That's what's just so weird. Which, yeah, uh, which I don't know about theories. theories. I don't know about theories. I'm pretty sure all that shit he said was Rothschilds and shit. It's accurate. I think they're, they're yes, not Jewish. Yes, he said the Rothschild stuff too. Oops, you can't do yeah. that. Well, no, that's the thing. Yes. if And that's the thing I was talking to you about before also. I forgot that he said the Rothschild stuff. When you start saying that, he started implicating that like the Rothschilds represent all Jews. Mm. This is straight out of Hitler's playbook. Like right. just Gottlieb's law my ass. No, this is exactly what Adolf Hitler said. He tried to argue that, oh – don't worry about the Jews that work for people. Don't worry about the Jews that maybe own a grocery store. You know, don't worry about the Jews who work in the banks. And like, look at the fact that one set of Jews owns a bank. Oh, they're the problem. Oh, look at the world. Well, if he you said know, it, if, all if the he banks said it that are owned. Way. Yeah, all the banks are owned by Jews, and all the. No, I'm saying Hitler said, forget about these people. Look at the fact that Jews are bad because they own this and they own and they own the banks. And you got to remember during World War II. Uh, there was a lot of money impugned on Germany for what happened 20 years earlier in World War One, uh, And a lot of uh, Germans did believe there was a conspiracy there because not a single bomb landed in Germany, not a single enemy boot land, uh, walked or marched in Germany. So the idea that they sur- – that um, 
uh, not Himmler. That that was a guy who worked for the 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 Kaiser. The, I think it was the Kaiser. Damn it! I, I hope I'm not getting it wrong. Anyway, uh, the the leader of Germany at the time, he surrendered, even though they weren't. You know, it's like the the the, the armies moved in, but the Germans didn't see anybody enter their their cities. So they're like, well, it's a conspiracy. And, they, and a lot of them thought that for 20 years. And Hitler built off of that. And he needed a bad guy. Gays weren't enough. The gypsies, the, the Roma and other gypsies weren't enough. And he's like, oh, the Jews. I'll use the Jews also. And he's a very racist guy. So he decided to say these horrible, terrible things about all these groups of people, including and especially the Jews. And that's what wound up happening. So when Nick Cannon starts taking something directly out of the playbook, and this is something that ha- that does have to be acknowledged. If you can acknowledge that Donald Trump says horrible things about Jewish people and then lies and says, I'm the least anti-Semitic person you know. No, you're a liar. You're a liar. You are very anti-Semitic. You're very racist. You have to apply the exact same standards to Nick Cannon. And he did and, say that's where he, he and, was really wrong. Well, he did apologize for it. And- as he was saying it, I remember hearing him say, um, I got to be careful with how I say this. He says, meaning he understands at least it means he's got a, a, an understanding of what he's saying, how it could be interpreted. And he does not mean for it to come off badly when you say, well, I got to watch myself when I explain this. So, I mean, I, I'm not I'm not completely like mad at Nick Cannon. I just disagree with the whole like black supremacy. Is that's what we're calling it? Hmm. Uh, uh, that's not what I'm calling. I don't know what it is. Oh, no. uh, like, yeah, yeah. Just saying in general. Um, here's the thing. I didn't hear the apology. I didn't know about that stuff. And he like, wrote it on I, Facebook. It was a long ass book. And then he Facebook. goes to Viacom and he says, "I want my wild and out million dollar property back, billion dollar property." But I don't know if he gets that. You know what? I would hope that all of the people who are on the show, even if they have like a new guest host, like they promote one of the regulars, I hope they all just stay. No, nope, we are not doing wild and out without him. It is not the same. I hope the DJ keeps, uh, you know, away from it. And I hope everyone sticks by him because that's how we're supposed to do it. Huh. It's on MTV. I don't watch MTV. So I've never actually se- I- I've seen some recordings of the show afterwards on YouTube, but I never really like faithfully watch the show. <clears throat> um, Why'd you yeah, cough there? Know. Why'd you cough there? You've been to Hong Kong recently? Oh, geez. Okay. So Hong Kong, just really quick. I see the segue. I see the segue. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so as far as the Nick Cannon thing, yeah, I literally just look at it as it is what it is. If he he apologized and he didn't just say, listen, I completely apologize. I don't think that Jews are, you know, conspiracy theory, Rothschild, take over the banks and blah, 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 whatever. Like if he says the Rothschild specifically, okay, fine. That's, that's an accusation. But when you say like, you know, when you start saying like, it's a Jewish plot, dude, this is Hitler talk. That is directly, that is Hitler talk. That's not even a sensitivity issue. That's, you are wrong, brah. You should not be saying things like that. You shouldn't, like, why would you even think something like that? It says something about you. But anyway, uh, and then saying, I have to be really careful about how I say this. Well, maybe you should take a couple of deep breaths and maybe come back tomorrow and say something. That's but, not how I took that, but okay. Uh, I'm just going based on, like I said, I didn't see the apology. I'm okay. going by what you told me. Um, as far as Hong Kong, really simple. Disneyland and the movie theaters have closed again after a, another rise in COVID cases. So, hey, guess what? <laughs> Dealing with some, I uh, gotcha. I think Chill has some company. So, <laughs> anyways, in general. Um, yeah, that's just, I don't know, it is what it is. They um, they tried to open up again, and then unfortunately the cases came back, which it sucks, but unfortunately that's what winds up happening when you just rush to open stuff. Mm-hmm. You want to get off some comic book stuff real quick? We got yeah. Dynamite. There's going to be a new uh, cover artist on these streets. Starts yeah, with an E, <laughs> middle letter V, and then comes the S. So Ethan Van Skyver has been commissioned to do a cover for a book in Dynamite Comics. Mm -hmm. First, a little history. It's very brief. Dynamite Comics does not care about Twitter. They will put out one or two things here and there on Twitter and whatever. They're not big on their advertising. So they put out their books and you either buy them or you don't. That's how Dynamite is. They don't care about Twitter. So they have not seen – I can almost promise that most of these guys have not seen – most of the stuff out there about Ethan Van Skyver or any comic skater. You, you don't know think what I'm so? saying? I really 
de- like it's been from, four or five years. Yeah, I'm sure it's been four or five years, but like, what do you call it? There, there are people who will think whatever there, there are people who like, how long has Joe Biden been in existence? And yet people don't realize that he's the reason why the crime bill puts so many people in prison. He's the reason why you're not allowed to claim bankruptcy on your, or get rid of your student loan debt. Mm-hmm. You know, so yet they're still like, you know, Joe Biden for president. It's like, dude, you had so many other options you could have gone with, but yeah. we don't know these things because they just don't pay attention. That's not the circles that they hang in. They just want to sell comic books. And Ethan Van Skyver, I know you're not supposed to say anything good about somebody who's a bad person, but Ethan Van Skyver is a well. freaking amazing artist. Mm-hmm. Like he is a sick, amazing artist. If I had the skills Ethan Van Skyver did, I'd walk around with no pants. That's right. I'd walk around with no pants. You know what I'm saying? It's like, look at look at my artwork. <laughs> yeah, that's just that's just who I am. Anyway, so um, yeah, a couple of people are quitting now over him being hired. They're, they're going to finish out their contract and they're not going to work with uh, them anymore. Um, yeah, I'm not prerogative. A, it is their prerogative. For right now, it is only one book that they're going to be doing with Ethan. So at the end of the day, this is – it's noble. I don't care if you're a libertarian or if you're a conservative or if you're a, 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 li- a liberal. I don't care what political background you are. I don't care what you believe about this, that, or the other thing. If you're willing to put your money where your mouth is, that says a lot. If you've got a contract working with a comic book company and you say – I'm going to end this contract and I'm not going to be working with you again as long as this person is working there. That is noble. You know what I'm saying? That, that no, the deed, the deed itself, it, what I'm talking about is it's noble to you. say, yeah. I stand by my beliefs. Right, right, you know right. what I'm saying? These are my beliefs and I'm willing to live or die on these beliefs. Are you because right about your beliefs, wrong about your beliefs? I don't yeah, care. If this was the 60s and someone said, I don't want to because you're hiring Malcolm X to write the Black Panther, then you would still say it's noble for you to stick by your. The, your, um, even though it's an unnoble uh, freaking take, but still. It, yeah, exactly. It's an unnoble thing. It's like, dude, Malcolm X, good people, support yeah. the dude, but at least, you know, you're putting your money where your mouth is, and that that says a lot. Yeah. And then we got the the digital comics that were supposed to be physicals, but then when COVID happened, they became digitals. Those will now be released in print. Now, the question is, Will they honor your LCS's order form that they wrote up like back in January before the whole Corona stuff? Because if they do that, there is a whole bunch of customers who already bought their digital comics when it was available digitally. Mm-hmm. And they're going to go to the store and they're going to see that Hawkeye free fall over there. And they're going to say, I already read that one. I already gave Marvel my $4 comic book store. You sit on that inventory or... Yeah. Or will the, the comic book stores have a second chance to, you know, do some new orders? I don't know the answer to that. I asked and I don't, my LCS and we didn't get, did you ask Carlos about that? I didn't even know about this. We'll see because that's going to screw over all the LCSs who work on, um, even if you have a subscription based uh, a model, some people that just like put all of them on the store shelves, which is great if you can do that, but like. The, even even the people who go off subscription, the pull list. I thought be... didn't we talk about this last week? And you said that it was supposed to be like made to order. I don't think we brought it up in the show. Hmm. I seem to remember somehow somebody was talking with me about it, and they said something about they were going to be made for order. It's like oh, they weren't going to be available before, and now they're going to be available. But you have to, you know, say in advance, I want this many. Okay, so, then. I hope yeah. that is the case. In which case, it would be the latter part of your argument, which would be a good thing. Yeah. Okay, okay. You know what else is a good thing? Free comic book summer. <laughs> so every week they're releasing a new free comic book for the free comic book day, which we missed, is which was always supposed to be the first day in March. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the first day in May, excuse me. So um, the first Saturday, the first oh, the first Saturday in May. Obviously, we couldn't do that because of the pandemic. So every week they're releasing a new one. Next mm-hmm. week, that means this coming Wednesday, the Amazing Spider-Man one is coming out. Pick that one up. Mm-hmm. Because they are intro- Donny Kate said, I'm introducing a brand new symbiote character. So check it out. Now, so, why yeah. don't they do that for freaking $4 books where you can actually make money? Why don't you just announce it? 
It's not Amazing hard. Spider-Man had that, like there's a tradition of introducing a new character or more in a free comic book day. Uh, sure. Mr. Negative was introduced in a free comic book day, like in 2008, I think it was whatever it was. Dan Slott. And they've with Amazing Spider-Man, they've always been here's a brand new character. Either he'll be a good take or he won't, but it's free, so go get it. Yeah. Um, yeah. It it like it's good. It's good for the business. It is. You're not going to make the immediate money off of that, but it's good for the business. No, you, Plus, you do make the immediate money off of that because when you announce it, people are going to order it more. Amazing Spider-Man nowadays they get yeah. seventy thousand uh, issues or something like that. Yeah. So the, let's, the comic huh. book company still does. Uh, get these and they have to pay for the shipping and all these and they're going to get a certain they can pay for extra ones whatever but more than that if the comic book company you know or the comic book store says and yeah, they keep like you know 20 of these <laughs> which maybe they shouldn't do but if they do say hey the first you know the one that you send me for free boom but i'm going to order an extra pack and those yeah. i'm going to keep in the back mm-hmm. they're allowed to do whatever they want it's their inventory for free you know comic books, so, yeah, yeah but exactly. even, if it, even if they were like full price comic books they should do that also yeah, they could if they know it's going to be a big one. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's why you announce it early so that mm. these comic book stores know to sit on these. They, they're happy to keep things that are going to be valuable. They're pissed off to put things in their dollar bin because it wasn't selling. Yeah. It's a difference. Yeah, because yeah, they're not making quite as much for it. Yeah. Yeah. You want to touch on uh, Daily Beast Warren Ellis or you want to go to the Chills Head Cannon and call it? Daily Beast, Warren Ellis. Okay, there was actually an article by the Daily Beast, not just about Warren Ellis. It was actually entitled Warren Ellis, Cameron Stewart, and the Storm of Sexual Misconduct Allegations Roiling Out of the Comic Book Industry. Yeah. You and I and a bunch of uh, – there were like uh, 11 of us at one point talking about it in the Discord channel, which you guys feel free to check out the Discord channel. Um, what do you call it? Anyway, yeah, there was um, – th- it's it's a – it's not a long article, but it's a very detailed article and it talks about how hard it is and the stop gaps that are put into getting into the comic book industry and how it does open the door for there to be exploitation, including sexual exploitation. Uh, so yeah, it's a really good article. I don't want to get into it too much more, but it's a really good article and it does say how Warren definitely took advantage of that system. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And many others also. And people didn't get in trouble for things that they absolutely should have gotten in trouble for. And and it is really like a boys club. And mind you, a bo- when we say boys club, that's because that's what we usually see in the States. But there are such things as girls clubs. There are such thing as um, clubs just for certain ethnicities or certain nationalities and things like that. There are places where like they're the people who are in charge of hiring and they choose to hire and fire whoever they want. But predominantly it is – yeah, white men. So they keep it a boys club like that. So anyway, yeah. All right. Well, well we're going sexual with the <laughs> Chills headcanon of the week. Da, 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 da. Jean Grey and Logan last week, you know, Again. they're they're getting okay. busy. I'm going to keep this one vagina related. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because in Marvel Team Up, issue number two, year 2019 is when this book came out, right? Oh, okay. There's a, there's a moment where Peter Parker and Kamala Khan switch bodies. Yes. Oh. At school, Peter Parker in Kamala's body is feeling this pain. And he's like, well, every time I feel a sense of pain, I transform back into Kamala or, or back into Peter. But he's like, what is this happening inside me? He was experiencing a menstrual cycle from the teenage Kamala Khan. Hmm. You know, you would think... They made a big deal out of the first kiss for Kamala Khan. Remember that one? There was like a whole like letters page dedicated to it. Nothing on the first period. Significant moment in a in a Muslim woman's life. But um, they decided to, to to never mention that in a comic book until just oh Peter's having it and she's like yeah the struggles of a woman. Here's what I'm saying. Here's the headcanon part of it. They never mentioned it because it never bothered Kamala. Kamala's powers is she is a polymorph. You make her body go in any shape, size, or anything. So when the pain happens, she tells herself, reduce the size of this cause of pain. And all or, of a sudden... Or embiggen the... um the What's the ovary tract called? Yeah, Crap. either or, exactly. And so the inhuman abilities of Kamala Khan relieve her of period pain. Chills head cannon. That's how it goes down. This might be your best one yet. Oh, yeah? 
this might be your best one yet. I dig it. You deserve a no prize for that. <laughs> How's yes? Yeah, let me reach over and pat you on the back. Ba, 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 ba. Good job. Uh, yeah. oh, right? <laughs> Sorry, too hard. All right, that was awesome, man. Uh, oh, you know. Cool. Anything hey, else? No, that was it. That was it, man. And we enjoy really? you guys That's having us, fast. and we, we we like talking to you guys every single week here. Uh, this is where you down. get your your uh, comic book news from uh, for for the whole week. You don't have to keep looking at every stupid article and fake article that tries to make you believe this or the other thing. And where mm-hmm. else are we going to talk about who Jackman's ass? Anyway, so we're out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk to you guys later. Chill too. Make sure you subscribe to Chillmonger, who's going to be his 550th sub. I'm saying, we're out, Professor Bill and Chillmonger, Comic Book University. Class, Class dismissed. dismissed.